Hi guys and welcome back to another Dolt Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23 and it's time for another live GP race. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot get enough of these live GP races and I've been finding races every single day I've been jumping on so I'm pumped to be making another live GP video here today. But this one's going to be an interesting one, the Red Bull Ring of Austria in the wet conditions. I don't know if the race is going to be wet but I know that the qualifying is because, well, we can see it right now and I've left the qualifying late. The rider in first place, I don't know how to pronounce this so I'll just go XE, is currently pretty fast and I'm not sure if I'll be able to contend with his lap time but in the first split we're up by five tenths of a second compared to our own time. I don't think it's five tenths quicker than him, I think it's just five tenths quicker than our own, but we've got a red sector time and that's all that matters. I don't know if I can do this. Shout out to Stradale as well. We've uh, ridden many times with him in previous Ride 4, Ride... F not Ride 5, but Ride 4 videos and even MotoGP as well, so it's good to see him there. I think I dropped him an invitation and he joined on either the Ducati or the Gas Cast. I can't really tell with the colour. I think it's the factory Ducati team, but we're up by four and a half tenths of a second, ladies and gentlemen, into the second split. This is the Roche corner for turn seven. We're going to go tight to the apex. The Rainmaster is looking at a potential pole. Maybe not Rainmaster, but I do feel pretty good in the rain condition sometimes. So we'll see how it goes. But I actually struggled in this one. It was taking me a while to really get up to speed and up to temperature. Because as you can see, 138, 137, not particularly strong lap times. But this one could be the 136 to take pole. We did touch the green ever so slightly there, but the game was forgiving. And now on to the power. Oh, I'm well on the green there. <laughs> no. Oh, we are. We've been forgiven across the line. It's pole position. The 136.775 and XE1A5 has gone down. This could be it. We have one more chance. Will he have another chance? He's got 30 seconds to get across the line. He must have gone down into the Red Bull mobile corner somewhere. He's about to cross the line now, so he has one more chance. I've got one more chance as well. We're sharing the podium with a Repsol Honda, or at least the front row. We're down by a tenth in the first split. Hard on the brakes, going into the right-hand side for the Remus corner. This is turn three, not turn four, because, of course, turn A, 2A and 2B is the chicane. And he's gone down! That must mean it! That must be it! We've got the pole. So as providing we just go a little bit quicker, we'll cement our lead. Oh, a little bit out of shape, going into the slot goal, and we've gone down. We've all crashed. Oh, and he's crashed again. <laughs> pole position is for us. So good stuff then. We're in pole position here for a very wet Red Bull Ring of Austria. So I don't know how this one's going to go. I'm hopeful. Starting in pole position is always good. And uh, I think so far I've started every race on the front row. A couple of pole positions to my name and I think we're on par with pole positions and race wins so one of them will eventually be improving but here today wet conditions, Prima Pramit Ducati, we wait for the red lights to go out and away we go oh a bit eager on the power, it's not traditional Doctor Ace, we're usually quite good at the start but ever since I mentioned my, oh goodness me the, uh, the Red Bull KTM, in fact they're both on KTM's actually oh what the hell happened then <laughs> oh my lord! What on earth was that? They both just flew off their bikes. Very strange. But uh, okay, well we, we were lucky. We got away with that and I was also lucky for kind of abusing the limits there into 2A and 2B. But onto the brakes. The Aprilia man is currently in first position. That's where I want to be. So let's see what we can do in the wet conditions here in the Red Bull Ring of Austria. So considering it looks like it's not going to stop raining, I have gone for the double softs, soft front and soft rear as we now go firm onto the brakes. Oh, a little bit wide there, a little bit deep. Oh, he's gone down! Oh, I thought he was going to skittle me then. What a bizarre and dramatic race this Red Bull Ring of Austria is turning out to be. Two seconds ahead of the Aprilia man, so he didn't really gain much of an advantage. Uh, maybe if I was a bit more confident I could have just gone round the outside, but I, I expected the Aprilia to fly down and to take me out, but uh, we're good. We have a two second advantage. I will be honest, I know XE1A5 is quicker than I am in the wet conditions. I don't think he got the best qualifying, but I did see him start off and he looked strong, so we'll see what happens. A little bit deep there into the rint corner for turn 10. Oh, I can't seem to keep the bike on the, on the, on the, uh, on the 
the dark part of the tarmac, <laughs> if you want to call it that. And across the line, we are leading lap one, but he has gained on me already. It's a 1.8 second advantage for us on the Prima Prima, <laughs> Prima Pramac Ducati. Say that too many times fast. So back onto the power. One of the Red Bull KTMs has gone down. As we now go back onto the brakes. Into the right hand side for turn two. Turn two A and then turn two B. A little bit tight to the apex there. It, it works but it's, it's a bit cheeky to cut across the corner. I, I think I am touching the uh, the curbs though so I guess it's alright but struggling into the Ramus corner. We are losing time. Yeah, he is, he is really, really on it. He could be using power setting three, so things might stabilise when we drop, when he drops down to power setting two. But uh, to be quite honest with you, he could just be better than I am in the wet. You know, I joked earlier, said I was the rain master, but I don't think I am. I can have some good races in the wet conditions, but struggling a little bit with the Ducati. I, I got to be honest, I felt way better in the qualifying. I don't feel particularly confident here in the wet conditions of the race. I don't feel like the bike's stopping where I want it to stop. Not able to turn in either. Bit of sliding going on already. This is not looking too promising for me. He is on the charge. I've got to defend... Ah, come on. Stop going on the rumble strip. Every time we get caught on the curbs there, it's, it's pretty much game over. But into the right hand side for turn 10. Gaps down to 7 tenths of a second. Now into the difficult Red Bull mobile corner. Bring on the ride height device, but don't bring it on prematurely. He's coming. Half a second is the gap across the line. We will temporarily be the fastest man on track, but he's set at 136.6. That's significantly better than my qualifying lap time. Yeah, he's on it. The Aprilia man is on it. He's ready for this one. I think he might have been held up from the other riders in the qualifying. And I don't think I can live with that pace. I mean, podium's a podium at the end of the day, but I want to win. This is the live GP, ladies and gentlemen. This is why 9,000 aces are watching. If you want to see wins, that's deep into turn four. Maybe we should go power sitting three. Maybe I've been a bit too conservative. He's on the charge. The Aprilia looking to be the best bike at the moment. XE1A5 looks to be the best player at the moment, too. Into the Schloss Gold. Keep it in. Got to play it nice and tight now. Defend where I can. Accelerate where I also can, but we're losing too much time on the acceleration. Perhaps I'm being a little bit too aggressive on the acceleration. Stradale has gone down. He's down to. He's still in third, though. And the rider in fifth place has also gone down, so it's still back of the field for him. Four tenth split. Going to be a good lap here, I think, from us, but I just don't think we can contend with the number 15. But there's no need to panic. Just keep, uh, just keep ahead of him and try and hold on to the position. We can always fight back. In some of the other corners as we now go into oh no oh it didn't feel like I did anything wrong there oh I break the exact same way in every single lap but for some reason no clearly I didn't <laughs> clearly I didn't oh damn it well that was silly that was a completely unforced error I didn't even feel like I did anything wrong there oh well that is annoying. So, the great part about this now is the inhibitions is gone. We have lost the lead. We're down by four and a half seconds. So, the only plan now is to fight back. Keep on churning out the lap times and let's see if we can improve. But I am a little bit miffed at that. I honestly didn't feel like I did too much there. I really didn't feel like I should have crashed there. But, it is what it is. I must have gone a little bit beyond the limit. Just a smidge. But it was enough to send the Prima Prama Ducati down to the floor and skittling out of the uh, of the Grand Prix. Or not quite the Grand Prix, we're still on board for now, but gaining time all the time. Yeah, oh, wide there for the Sloss Gold. Well, I think I've been beaten. I've certainly met my match in this one. I, I am a player that knows when I've met my match. I know when I've been beaten, and I know when the limit has been reached. And I've got to say, the, the person on that Aprilia is doing a solid job. A 136 in these conditions is very solid. It's a fair play to the number 15. Reminds me of another certain number 15 who's ridiculously fast, and that of course is Fuchs. Very, very fast in all conditions is the Brazilian. Been a while since I've played with the Brazilian ace. And now into the right hand side for turn 10, really close. This time around, almost losing the front once again. 
But we will be close to the 136. It's not on this lap to say we're in it, but should be a 136.3 across the line. It's a one. Uh, uh, sorry, excuse me, 137.4. And we have not gained any time to the right. The race. Ah, the race leader. Oh, this has not gone as I planned. Bit of a disappointing on this one because I really felt like I could be more competitive. And I guess. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, that, that's that's warranted. That was definitely warranted. That was too tight to the apex. But I'm also thinking that if that gap stays the same, that means we're doing the same lap times. If only I hadn't have crashed. I think he must have been using power swing 3. Gap's now got to 5.2, so he is significantly better than I am. Let's see what it is at the end of this sector time in a moment. Of course, the sector is just after the Schloss Gold corner. Yeah, I know he's pulled a lot of time. Oh, maybe. A little bit misleading is the graphic. But he has pulled a further two tenths. Now onto the brakes for the left-hand side for the Roche corner for turn seven. A bit wide there, actually. I'm really struggling to turn this bike in. It felt really good in the qualifying. It's possibly the fuel can... We've got a lot more fuel, and it's a lot heavier. It's a bulkier bike when you've got fuel in. And I think I'm just going to have to accept defeat. 5.6 seconds it is, the gap. I, I can accept it. I can I can agree with this. Fair play. But of course, guys, I have made a lot more live GP races coming out in the very ne very near future. But if you want to see me use a particular bike, then let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll accommodate the request. But I've done at least five live GP races, so it won't be for a while yet. Or coincidentally, if you happen to choose the same bike I have, then oh, happy days. But uh, let me know if you want me to use a specific bike combination here in the MotoGP 23 live GP races. So now onto the brakes again. Tight to the split of turn 2A. Back onto the rumble strip of 2B. Gaps down to 6 seconds. And we're still in the 137s. I want to get back into 136s. I was only able to do it once in qualifying. Would love to do it again here in the race. But the wet conditions is a track, it, it, it's a circumstance which favours the brave, and unfortunately this time I don't think I was brave enough. Oh, a bit wide, a bit deep into Schloss Gold, but we're gaining a couple of tenths of a second, or at least we were. Yeah, we still are, three tenths. We're not that far away from a 136. And, uh, and end the video a happy man if we can get into the 136s. We go into left hand side. That tyre wear has gone really quickly as well. I don't think the medium tyres would have been the choice for this one, because the, the conditions are really rough. Maybe I should have done. What would you have done? What would you have done in this situation, guys? Would you have gone for the medium wet tyres or the soft wet tyres? Let me know in the comments section down below. But uh, improving this lap will be good for my confidence. But uh, instantly look at the gap and realise how far behind we are. Not too promising after all. But on to the power. And across the line, it is not an improvement. We lost 32 thousandths of a second. It's hard on the brakes again into the first corner for the Nicky Louder curve. Looking a bit more promising now. Now the fuel started to drop, I feel better. I feel much, much better. But of course, I couldn't afford to reduce the fuel because we're in a full race situation. Oh, oh no! Ah! Never mind about feeling better. This one's been a disaster. I throw the book. <laughs> I'm throwing the flag. I'm throwing the flag, guys and gals. I, I can't win this one. He has been by far superior. In the past, if the wet conditions come out, I've been pretty competitive. But, uh, no, I feel like I've really let myself down in this one. Really struggled here in the Red Bull ring. I do love this circuit as well, so it would have been, a, would have been great if it was dry. But it is what it is. We cannot change the past. We'll be losing four seconds on this lap. Embarrassing. Oh, Stradale has gone down again. Bad time for the number three. I think bad time for a lot of us here. The only man who's doing particularly well is XE1A5. There's probably a name to that that I'm just completely missing, but uh, yeah, I don't I don't see it. Is it Elon Musk's kid? <laughs> is, that what it, is that what his kid's name is? Something to do with the letter X, I know that much, but uh, I don't know the rest of it. And on to the brakes going into the rent corner for turn 10. Nice, a little bit more of an improvement going into there, and then we completely messed it up by bringing on the power too aggressively. I honestly feel really weak in this track. 
don't know what it is, but the bike feels significantly different compared to the qualifying. Could be the tyres, could be the track temperature, could be the fuel. Who knows? All I know is I didn't deliver today. We've got three more laps, so let's see what we can produce. The Aprilia is now already approaching turn four, and we're into 2A and 2B. Oh, goodness me. Felt like it was going to go again. I'm bringing on the power. My confidence is actually dwindling with each one of those moments. <laughs> nice and firm on the brakes there. Trying to get some life back into the front brake. Did notice a few times the rear brake went a bit cold. I noticed that in a few of the corners as one of the KTMs goes down again. Was that the same guy who did the um, like three long lap penalties in Catalonia a few days ago? I feel like it was the same guy. I don't remember, though. I think that may have been with the Repsol Honda. I really don't remember. Oh, just touching the grass on the exit of Turn 5. Now into the left of Turn 7. Going for that tighter line this time around. Seems to be a lot smoother. And we're actually gaining a small amount of time. Back into the left for the Worth Curve. And then onto the right for the Turn 9. Oh, don't bring on the power too early, because we do not want to get caught onto the curbs. Hard on the brakes into the right hand side. This is the corner I crashed at just a couple of laps ago of course. Across the line. Oh goodness me. Scary moment again going into the Red Bull mobile corner. And across the line. We might get close to improvement but back into the 137.4. So we, we do have a pace. It's just not a very good pace. <laughs> but it is a pace. So <laughs> It's not too bad. The operation was a success, but the patient died. <laughs> not bad. Still using the uh, shadow there underneath the Singar uh, beer sign to, as, a, as a reference point for braking. But uh, I do apologise that this video has not been the most interesting, but I've certainly tried to keep it fun. And with uh, just one and a half laps to go, not too much more to end this video, of course, but uh, back on the power, still trending in a positive. We, we might actually get into the 136 before the video concludes. Back into Power Saving 3. We've got a bit of fuel to burn, but ultimately I, I just don't think we can. <laughs> That's the reality, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. But 43 seconds ahead of Sudali. We, we may only get two two finishes in this one. And that should be it. Now into the left of turn 7. And we are improving, but I have gone back up to Power Saving 3. Is the difference really night and day in, in the wet conditions? I know it is in the dry, but in the wet conditions, depending on the circuit, depending on the corners, you don't really notice the difference. But a couple of tenths in our favour, not quite yet. Onto the brakes we go. No, no, I think I've gone deep. This is the... Oh, is this the final lap? Beautiful! I didn't realise it was the final lap. I thought it was uh, one lap to go, so... We might as well use Power Saving 3, get across the line, end the race on a high, but uh, not particularly high, of course. Oh, it's not over yet! Oh, yeah, of course! <laughs> the final lap is what? XE8... Oh, God. Yeah, XE1A5 is the, the man who's leading the race. Blue flags out somewhere. Where? Oh, the Aprilia man is... Yeah. The Aprilia man's going in now into turn four. At least he was. And the Red Bull KTM looks to be either holding him up or he crashed somewhere just ahead of him. Ironically now, I've had to use Power Saving 1 because I thought that last lap was the end. Not a bad consistency towards the end, but hey, <laughs> it is what it is. But uh, definitely let me know what you want to see next in the next couple of videos. I've also got some Moto2 career mode videos coming out very soon, which you should definitely not miss. I don't know if you've been watching the rest of them, whoa. But we've had some pretty intense fights and uh, the next couple of races, in fact, one of them will be at this track as well. So definitely watch that one too. But there is the rider ahead of us. Either he's having a tough time or he wants to get involved and mess my race up. I, I can't help to always think that with other riders. Yeah, I think he's trying to get in my way here. Maybe. I don't know, but... Uh, whoa, he's... Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh, what on earth was that? <laughs> if you can't win, just throw the bike into the tenth corner. Or ninth corner, should I say. <laughs> oh, well... It's not a victory for us, but we'll get on the podium, and I guess second place is the first loser, or the second winner. You decide on what I should think of that, but guys, 
And that's it from me. So fair play to the man on the Aprilia, the Frenchman. And I'll see you in the next MotoGP 23 or even Ride 5 video. Thanks for watching, guys. See you tomorrow. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.